Chapter 1081 Marriage Ji Ruajin brought in a few demigods to check out Han Sen and evaluate whether or not there was something they could do for him, but nothing worthwhile came from their observations. The crystals were firmly lodged in his body and had become a part of him. The demigods were strong, and even though they could have broken the crystals, destroying them would mean destroying the organs. And destroying the organs would mean killing Han Sr. A few days later, a middle-aged man came to see Hansen with Ji Yinwu. Ji Yinwu, from what Hansen could immediately see, respected the man he had brought with him a great deal. And although he didn't say a word, Hansen could tell who this person was. It was Luo Haidang, the god layer. After Luo Haidang examined Hansen, all he did was sigh and leave. He never returned after that. Many people came to know about Hansen's poor condition. Although the specifics weren't widespread, it was common to hear people whisper about Hansen having suffered an unfortunate accident. The wounds Hansen had incurred were so grievous, not even the legendary God's Lair could fix them. Hansen wasn't in any danger of dying, and his condition wouldn't have been a big deal had he been an ordinary person, but Hansen was Hans Senator, and without his powers, Hansen was useless. He felt useless. Many people came to visit. Some came kind heartedly to see if they could do anything or, at the very least, express their condolences. Others just came to see if what they had heard was true, the great Hansen had fallen. No matter what they thought though, Hansen did not give in to sadness. He wasn't going to abandon hope of recovery because he had a solution of his own. He might not have been able to open his gene locks, but he could still make use of his super king spirit mode. With that, he himself could remove the crystals slowly over time. Because the crystals were a part of Hansen, they had to be removed bit by bit, slowly. It would take a long time for this crystallization process to be reversed, a very long time. Hansen actually had another method of fixing himself, and that was to use the demon language he had learned while in Devil's Realm. If he spoke it, he could heal and improve his body quickly. But of course, Hansen still preferred to get rid of it the slow way. He wasn't going to immediately fix himself if doing so allowed the light to change him. What a shame. The Zhao family feigned sadness over the entire affair. But obviously, behind the scenes, they mocked Han Sr. The Zhao family and Han Sen had much bad blood between them, so it was only natural for them to feel this way. Their history was an ugly one, after all. The people who were genuinely close to Han Sen, though, who believed he could not recover, were incredibly upset over what had occurred. Handsome. Wang Mingming and Wang Yuhang came to visit Hansen one day, and when they looked at Hansen, they did so with red eyes. Evidently, they had been crying their eyes out upon learning of his condition. Qin Lan, Yang Manli, Tang Xinliu, Lin Feng, Lin Bei Feng, Su Xiaoqiao, Lu Ming, and Huang Fu Pingqing all came to visit him. Over time, even Ming Yu came to visit. Ning Yu did not say much, given the circumstances, but before he left, he said, Recover soon? Yes? Without an opponent as formidable as you up and about, this world seems rather dull already. Hansen smiled and responded, You can always buy me a drink sometime. Queen also came to visit Han Senator. She didn't stay long, though. All she did was slap Hansen's forehead and swiftly leave. Even Hansen was confused by this behavior, and after she left, he nursed his forehead and mulled why she had acted that way. Many more people came to visit Hansen and it warmed his heart far more than he thought it would. He was delighted to learn he had so many friends who genuinely cared for his well-being. Hansen's mother, Luo Lan, did not sound worried at all, though, upon learning of his affliction. She even had the gall to say, Perhaps this means you can stay at home and make some babies for me. I've been waiting a long time for a grandson. Hansen could only present her a wry smile after this, not fancying himself as a baby-making machine. Don't you need to work? Hansen asked Ji Yin Ran, who came to visit and was peeling an apple for him. Ever since what happened, Ji Yin An had practically moved into the Han household to look after him. I retired, Ji Yin Ran said. Hansen was shocked to hear this and said, I thought you wanted to be a captain. There's no need for you to worry about me. Ji Yin An looked at him and said, You owe me a wedding. You still owe me a proper proposal. Have you forgotten about how terrible your first was? No, Hansen answered. Give it to me now, Ji Yin Ran demanded. But now I, Hansen wanted to say he was planning to give her a better one, once he was healed. You need someone beside you 24-7, and I want that person to be me. Ji Yin Ran was firm in this stance. 
But I, Hansen didn't want Ji Yin and to waste her life and career by nursing him. You owe me. And besides, the psychic said if I don't marry this year, it's best I wait another ten years. And I don't want to wait ten years before I get married. Ji Yinren pleaded. Yinren. Hansen held her, thinking her kindness to be immeasurable. He was so touched, he felt he'd have to spend his entire life trying to repay her sacrifices just to be with him. Hansen proposed and they got married. The wedding ceremony was simple, held between close family members and friends. Once it was done, they became husband and wife. After their wedding, Ji Yin and opened an aircraft company on planet Roka. Hansen spent his time researching hypergeno arts. He could not practice hypergeno arts at this time, so all he could do was research them. Bai Ishan taught him much, but he also spent time studying ancient languages to help him practice the Dongshan Sutra in the future, amongst other things. Hansen confirmed what he wished to research, opting not to learn about the more famous hypergeno arts or the hypergeno arts that were applied to the use of weapons. He researched the powers of the coin toad. He wanted to make it a hypergeno art. Hansen didn't want to just make it any hypergeno art, as it currently was. He wanted to make the low tier coins even more powerful, so they could match with high tier gene locks. Chapter 1082 Reaper Every once in a while, Hansen activated his Super King Spirit Mode to purge what little of the crystals he could. The process was painful, in addition to being slow. He could only chisel it away bit by bit, and removing it all seemed like it was going to take a few years. But Hansen did not waste all this time in the Alliance. He still visited the sanctuary to consume food Disloyal Knight collected on his behalf, so he could improve his sacred Geno Point tally. Disloyal Knight hunted in the forest, but primarily did so inside the Devil's Realm, where there were sacred blood creatures in abundance. By doing this, the Devil Fong Badge was able to gather many Devil Presences. Hansen was unable to fight, but his weapons were not wasted. The hardest part of this entire period of his life was not removing the crystals. It was the part where he had to make babies. He and Ji Yin Ren worked hard at this, but still no pregnancy came. In the meantime, they used Bauer as a way of practicing being parents. One year after this entire misfortune befell Hansen, a scientist called Fuli announced he had discovered a way in which life geno essences could be refined. After much testing, it was deemed safe and was widely used. And following this discovery, humanity officially entered the super gene era. It was only a matter of time before they figured out a method, but still, they had done so a little faster than Hansen had expected. Humans who wished to refine a life geno essence had to use a geno fluid that was attuned to the same element. Although it was not half as simple as what Hansen had been doing all this time, it was good progress. People in the first and second god sanctuaries were now able to make use of life geno essences but killing super creatures in the third and fourth god sanctuaries was still proving too difficult. It was a good thing for humanity on the whole, however, as this new avenue of ascension would make killing super creatures and super spirits a more accessible feat. Hansen was not just looking for super geno points, though. That was basic knowledge now, as far as he was concerned. Although Hansen had not accepted the powers given to him by the ancient devil light, he had been victim to a being that possessed ten gene locks. That level of power was what he had been fighting to achieve for all the years he had been in the sanctuaries. With enough time and fitness, ordinary king spirits could open nine gene locks. But opening ten was a rare feat, and the difference between a ninth and tenth gene lock was incredibly large. Not many king spirits and super creatures could achieve this, and for humans, the chances were practically zero. Still, Humans could become demigods and reach the fourth god sanctuary through the evolution pool. They didn't have to break through the sanctuary or be invited in, like spirits or creatures were. While getting there may have been quite achievable, surviving in the fourth god sanctuary was another matter entirely. Very few humans were able to eke out an existence there. As time went by, the name Hansen began to fade. People only recalled he was once a person who was considered the most powerful young man in the Alliance. Even the Luo family had now come to terms with the fact Hansen was not willing to learn the falsified Sky Sutra and cared little about whether he did or did not. A few years passed and Hansen and Ji Yin and had carved out a good life for themselves. Not much work was involved due to their amassed fortunes and so they spent much of their time shopping or traveling, oftentimes both. 
Han Yin had now reached the age where she was able to enter the first god's sanctuary, a place that humans had quickly become the rulers of. With their influence and domination of the realm, she was able to grow up and scale the ranks swiftly. Perhaps it was because of her genes, or the fact Luo Lan had taught her very well, but she was practically a copy of Han Sr. In a mere two years, she had become the reigning goddess of the first god sanctuary. She had even performed well enough to reach the top ten of divinities bout. People used to refer to Han Sin as a genius or the son-in-law of the president, but now they called him Han Yan's big brother. Han Sin was incredibly proud of what his little sister had achieved, too. But soon after, not even that name was widely known. His existence faded from the memory of those in the Alliance. He had gone into obscurity, returning to nothing but a whisper of an old glory. He and his legacy had become a forgotten relic. One day, though, he thought, he'd return and shock everyone. On this day now, Hanston was in the backyard, holding Ji Yanran. There, he watched Han Yin practicing her hypergeno arts. Hansen had taught her many things and frequently stepped in to instruct her, but today, something bothered him. His soured face was plain to see, so he stood up. Ever since what happened, Hansen had been unable to use Dosh and Aura. And because of this, he had been unable to get a true sense for Han Yan's power and observe what she had learned. But his abilities were now finally starting to return, as the remainder of the crystals were almost fully purged from his body. Today, he could see her clearly. Why are you practicing the Falsified Sky Sutra? Hansen knew the Azura Sutra and the Falsified Sky Sutra were practically the same, and he understood why his mother had not wanted him to learn it. It seemed as if, after the Luo family's failure in converting Hansen, they were back to their old tricks but with a different target, Han Yen. No, this is the big Luo skill from St. Hall. It's not the Falsified Sky Sutra. I can't believe you could make such a mistake. Han Yen laughed. Hansen was shocked. He understood now, and thought, the Luo family don't give in, do they? I can't believe they're dirty enough to resort to such tricks. Chapter 1083 the origins of the Falsified Sky Sutra. That night, Hansen spoke to Luo Lan alone. She seemed to know already, and she said, it's too late now. When the Luo family started learning the Falsified Sky Sutra, I knew it'd never stop. Luo Lan sighed and went on to say, I thought by hiding and obscuring your lineage, I could provide my children with a better life. A good one. I never wanted you to suffer or be burdened with things you should never have had to. I was foolish to expect the Luo family would drop this matter after you refused to learn. Foolish to believe they weren't so desperate, that they were even willing to get a woman, who didn't even possess the same surname, to learn it. But I don't understand, Mom. Why are they so insistent on us learning it? And if little Yin learns it, will she be in danger of any kind? Hansen asked. If the concern of the falsified Sky Sutra only applied to him, Hansen wouldn't inquire about it. But if it was going to affect his sister, he wanted to know as much as he could. It concerned Han Yan's safety, and that was of the utmost importance to Han Sr. Luo Lan looked at Han Sen, and Han Sen met her gaze. He had to know what danger could potentially face his sister. He was not going to let her deal with something so scummy and sly without knowing all the facts. If you are not willing to explain, then I'll ask the Luo family myself, Han Sen said. Luo Lan then told him, that would be pointless. Since you are now unable to learn the falsified Sky Sutra, they won't tell you a thing. Then I'll destroy their family. How does that sound? Hansen proclaimed. Luo Lan merely sighed in response, saying, that would be pointless, too. Nothing can be done for your sister right now, as she has already learned the skill. This is all my fault, though, and I accept that. It was stupid of me to not anticipate their desperation and expect such an arrogant man to go so far as to teach an outsider. All by a trick, too. How did this even happen? Han Sen's blood was boiling, but he did not want his mother to learn how angry he was. Luo Lan looked at her son for a while, and then she said, The falsified Sky Sutra didn't always belong to the Luo family, you know. Han Sen was shocked to hear this. Everyone in the Alliance believed the falsified Sky Sutra belonged to them, and them alone. For Luo Lan to confess it was not theirs was big. But then, Han Sen recalled the Azura Sutra. If his mother was willing to elaborate, he hoped she would. Our ancestry dates back to a time when we were little more than interstellar thieves and space pirates. Luo Lan continued to speak without Hansen having to prompt her. He was as surprised as he was glad. Interstellar thieves? 
Hansen did not expect the origins of a now high-class family in the Alliance to rest in such a sordid history, one that revolved around theft and piracy, as his mother was suggesting. Humanity has existed in the universe for a long time, but the Alliance has not always been here. And in the early days of space travel, humanity had to rely on the Shura for space faring, Luo Lan explained. What? Are you suggesting that the falsified Sky Sutra was stolen from a Shura king's tomb? Hansen was shocked. Yes. It was a skill that was originally developed by the Shura, but for some reason, it was hidden inside a tomb. No other Shura has learned it, as far as I know. And remember, Shura kings can only visit the tombs as a final pilgrimage unto a place of rest. They only go there when they are on the precipice of death. Even if they learn the secret there, inside the tomb, it's not as if they can leave and inform the others. There is no return for a dying Shura king. Luo Lan was not holding back. Why would it even be there? Hansen asked. The person who stole the falsified Sky Sutra did not know, either. But he did, after having learned it. Hansen did not say anything more, and just allowed her to speak. Luo Lan said, that Luo family member was so very smart. His intelligence was what allowed him to sneak inside that tomb in the first place. We were weak during that time, and on a whim, if they so fancied, the Shura could have destroyed humanity with ease. Regardless, after taking the Sutra, they translated the Shura text with the aid of a few captured Shura and forced them to learn it. These kidnapped Shura ended up dying. And upon their deaths, they immediately withered into skeletal husks. Soon after, they tried getting humans to learn it. The Shura may have died, but no ill fate befell the humans who learned it. We could learn it, but they could not, it seemed. That being said, the powers the translated text suggested we could wield were not at all like the real skill. We were weak and the skill's powers were low. That was, until a person. Who? Hansen asked. It was an eight-year-old girl. Luo Lan paused for a while. When her desire to speak returned, she said, the little girl came across the falsified Sky Sutra mistakenly, when it was originally meant to have been given to her father. She tried learning it herself, and was successful. She was able to wield the falsified sky powers with alarming proficiency. Hansen's heart leaped in his chest, and so he had to ask, what was this girl's name? For a moment, Hansen had thought it might have been zero. But the timeline didn't add up, so he dropped that consideration. Her name was Yumushuang, and she became the initial thief's wife. Luo Lan's face looked strange, and she went on to say, she was a mix. Her father was human and her mother was Shura. Perhaps it was the mixed Shura bloodline that allowed her to learn it. Only descendants of her blood were able to learn the falsified Sky Sutra in its truest form and purity, with its entire power. Unfortunately for the disciples of that Sutra, we no longer interbreed with the Shura. The blood has thinned, and the powers lessened as a consequence. If it wasn't for the sanctuaries amplifying our powers, the Sutra would be a forgotten memory and nothing more. Humans can't achieve the heights of what the skill is possible of, and Shura die when trying to learn it. Only a mix can perfect it. Why? Hansen asked. I don't know, and it has been a subject of much discussion within the ranks of the Luo family. No one has been able to yield an answer thus far. They have since tried to capture more Shura and force them to learn it, but the Shura continue to die. Chapter 1084 Luo Family Secret Luo Lan had spoken a lot all to explain to Hansen where the falsified Sky Sutra had come from. He still had many lingering questions, however, and one of those was why the family was so insistent on them learning it. Luo Lan continued to explain. It is because the blood of the Shura has thinned a lot since then. There was an argument in the Luo family, suggesting they interbreed with the Shura again and revitalize their blood. Others were, of course, against the idea. We are humans, and that's what they believed we should remain. Hybrids were not necessary. It split the family in two. Those who wished to keep the family as purely human remained in the alliance. The others went off to live with the Shura. Really? Who has gone there? Hansen asked. Luo Lan then spoke dimly, saying, This is the Luo family's greatest secret, one that cannot be shared. If I told you, the Luo family, you and Han Yin included, would be doomed. We still possess the blood of Shura in our veins. It may be light, but it's still there, and others may not take the volume into consideration were this to become known. It's why I have never told you anything about this before. And in regards to the names of those that went to the Shura, 
and who leads them, that is classified even for me. I have no idea. Your great-grandfather was once drunk and did mention their leader being incredibly handsome and let slip the name or title of someone called Yushura. That's weird. Isn't that the same name as the current queen of the Shura? Hansen had a wry smile. Luo Lan said, The Luo family does not want the falsified Sky Sutra to fall back into the hands of the Shura. If it did, it could be used against humanity. So, when Yushura left, he only learned the first half of the falsified Sky Sutra, the half you have. The second half is another secret, mind you. After your great-grandfather, there was no other heir for its learning. That was why they believed it was imperative for you to learn this sutra. Hansen was starting to understand quite a bit, and he thought these elucidations were brilliant. These revelations also explained to him why the Azura Sutra was longer than the falsified Sky Sutra. It was the complete version. You sure as mixed heirs were far stronger than those who decided to remain in the Alliance. It wasn't until we found the sanctuaries that we could grow and accelerate our development by collecting geno points, and later reclaim a position of greater strength than those who left. And if you're worried the mixed ones can enter the sanctuaries, you needn't be. Just like the genuine sure themselves, the mixed cannot enter. Luo Lan further went on to say, the Luo family members that left to be with the Shura, though, don't concern yourself with them. They cannot be considered relatives anymore, and beyond that, they don't even look like humans. The Luo family will never provide them the second half of the falsified Sky Sutra. As for the secret I mentioned, it is not to be mentioned to any outside the Luo family. Something occurred, and both the Yushura and Luo families agreed on not allowing anyone else to know. But, every ten years, the Luo family will send their strongest to battle against the strongest champion of Yushura's family. If the Luo family ever loses, they will be forced to hand over the second half of the Falsified Sky Sutra. Your great-grandfather is the only one who has learned the Falsified Sky Sutra in its entirety, so if anything ever happened to him, it'd be best if they had a replacement. If he died, the Ushura would get it. That's why the family wanted you for the longest time. Aside from me and Little Yin, aren't there any other viable candidates for them to teach? Hansen asked. Luo Lan said, your grandfather always desired strength. It consumed him, and he pushed and pushed until he fell in the sanctuaries. When I left the family, there weren't any geniuses like him left. Why don't I just destroy it? Hansen said. I have always thought that would be the best solution, so this entire matter could be just dealt with. But your great-grandfather is too arrogant to dare do such a thing. Luo Lan paused, before continuing to say, but now that your sister has learned it, the Ushura will find her if something happens to your great-grandfather. So, it is because of his foolish pride that my sister has to fight the Ushura every ten years? Does he have no consideration for others? Is this the cost of his pride? Hansen was appalled. It does not matter now. It is too late. Luo Lan looked regretful. Let me go to the Luo family and destroy this skill. Let pride be de-asterisk Ned and the fighting adjourned, Hansen proclaimed. Luo Lan believed Hansen to be kidding at first, but she said, she has already learned it. Doing that won't turn back the clock. Let's just hope she can become a demigod before your great-grandfather dies. I'm not waiting around, twiddling my thumbs and hoping for the best. I'll handle this. I won't let her get hurt on the account of some foolish old man. When Hansen said this, he thought to himself, nothing is more important than my family. I'd rather give the Azura. Sutra directly to Yushura, before letting my sister fight them needlessly. Hansen returned to the sanctuary for the first time in years. But this time, he was not Hans Senator now, he was Dollar. For his time there, he couldn't risk others finding out he was no longer crippled. Dragon King knew the location where they left off, and with Disloyal Knight there, there would be no need for him to fight much, anyway. Hansen met up with some humans who had entered that place a couple of years ago. He saved them as Dollar. In return, they gave him information regarding where they were. Hansen then took off towards a human shelter that had developed outside of that realm. For a ride, he summoned Golden Growler. Golden Growler had only just finished evolving a few months prior, and it was as strong as any super creature of the Third God Sanctuary could be. As good as this was, however, it hadn't opened any gene locks. Over the next few months, Hansen had managed to get the Golden Growler to open three gene locks. It'd still need to open another six to reach nine if it wanted to really compete, though. Fortunately, Hansen only wanted to use it for a ride right now. 
It was incredibly fast. When he reached the outskirts of that empty, forested land, he was not far off from the shelter he was headed towards. But all of a sudden, he started to hear screaming. Then, he saw a strange light. Hansen frowned. That area was not unlike where the shelter was supposed to reside, according to those humans. Chapter 1085 Dollar Falls from the Sky Su Xiao was feeling down in the dumps that day. He had managed to max out his sacred geno points in the second god sanctuary and was sent to a royal human shelter in the third god sanctuary. While this may have been fortunate, it was a pleasure that was short-lived. In less than a year after his arrival, creatures had come to conquer the place. Outside of the gate, a ten-meter-tall monster stood. It had two heads and six legs, and its body was like a grossly inflated marble. When he first saw it, and the accompanying wretches, he felt terrified. He had only been in that sanctuary for less than a year, and in that time, he had only been able to consume ordinary and primitive flesh. To face creatures such as that, at his level, the chance of survival was slim. Needless to say, Trench Shelter was doing poorly. The monsters attacking had been dubbed Raging Beasts, and the one in the lead was a sacred blood class creature. The others it commanded were not as strong but were still fairly powerful. The weakest of the foot soldiers were primitive, whereas none exceeded mutant class. With its gene locks open, the supreme raging beast clobbered the walls of the shelter. With each thud, the bricks of the shelter's composure shook. Each quake was more violent than the last, and all the humans inside mournfully accepted it was only a matter of time before the entire ramparts were brought down. And once those walls came down, there'd be nothing separating the humans inside from the ravenous maws of the hungry creatures baying for their blood. A few elites had leaped down to meet the assaulting creatures and battle them there on the plains, but it wasn't long before the shelter anchored. Non-fighters were forced to listen to a chorus of moans and screams. It hadn't gone well for the elites, that was for sure. The bodies of the creatures had proven too tough for the weaponry the elites wielded. They had quickly discovered they would have to aim for the eyes of the creatures if they wished to deal them harm. If a strike landed elsewhere, nothing would come of it. In the heat of battle, though, aiming for the blinking eyes of a horde of tall beasts was incredibly difficult. And as such, they did not fare well. With their armaments and magical abilities not being able to deal damage to the very bodies of the creature, things were dire for the fighters, right off the bat. Pang. The raging beast brought its raging fists down against the walls again, but this time, it successfully penetrated the stone. Brick and mortar were sent flying in a dizzying plume of dust. F asterisk CK. Su Xiao was on the wall as that occurred, and he fell all the way down to the ground. A brick had whacked his face during the tumble, and blood poured from his nose. Realizing there'd be no time for a visit to the infirmary, he knew he'd have to stay strong. So, he did his best to disregard the searing pain and instead raise his bow back up. He took aim and began firing arrows, just as he had been. Dong! The arrow hit a raging beast's face, but it pinged off the thick hide, he had failed to strike the eye. Su Xiao fired another arrow, and this second effort was actually a success. The arrow found its target and plugged itself deep into the eye of the rampaging monster. The leading creature reeled back in pain, letting out an earth-trembling groan as it unwittingly fell back onto the army behind it. That was Su Xiaoqiao's final arrow, though. And upon noticing his empty quiver, all he could cry aloud was, Why must these giants have eyes no bigger than beans? Su Xiaoqiao threw the bow aside and summoned a spear, hoping he could leap up and spike the eyes of the monsters in melee combat. And thus, he went into battle. The screams of agony, from both humans and monsters, was his soundtrack. With the clatter of steel and the tearing of flesh, with the lashing of blood and the breaking of bones, a symphony of war played an accompaniment to his charge. But the valiance of his charge was cut short by more tremors. The ground shook violently, and the volume increased rapidly. It got worse and worse. Another raging beast was approaching the battlefield. But this one was thirty meters tall, and its body was entirely black like hard obsidian. Berserk Sacred Blood Raging Beast is on approach. Zhao Long's face turned grim as he made the call out. He was the leader of the shelter. Trench Shelter had barely been able to hold strong against a mere few of the raging beasts. While the battle had been arduous and the many lives had been lost, the hope of victory had never departed them. But now, with a berserk sacred blood beast on the way, things had never seemed so hopeless. The berserk sacred blood raging beast did not heed the attack of any human, 
and it walked directly up to the gate of the shelter like a battering ram. Zhao Long flew up towards it, and with a spear imbued with the airborne fire of a thousand lightning bolts, threw it towards the advancing wretch. Like a bolt of lightning itself, the flight of the spear was instant. But the berserk sacred beast creature was not as lumbering as its appearance suggested, and it hastily managed to duck and avoid the spear striking its eye. It pinged off the monster's forehead and went spinning a few hundred meters away like a ricocheting bullet. Zhao Long's face turned ugly. Even had he missed the eye of the beast, he had hoped he could still deal damage to it. That was his strongest skill, but it had yielded nothing. Unhindered, the berserk sacred blood raging beast continued its approach towards the shelter's gate. Giant footprints on the ground were left in its wake. The humans who were still along the crumbling ramparts fired arrows as fast and as furiously as they could. And while the barrage of arrows came in like rain, they seemed to be as damaging as raindrops to the monsters, too. Any hope of salvation was now lost to the humans, and they watched in fear as the raging beast pounded the shelter. The gate would be broken into splinters any second now. That gate was a floodgate, and once it was down, it really would lead to a flood of countless hungry monsters. But their concern did not just lie there. The entire structure of the shelter had taken a significant walloping, and it was weakened. Soon, many spots on the walls would come falling down. With their morale hitting rock bottom, they could no longer even muster the courage to fight. The monsters were extremely excited in comparison, and the spirits of the filthy beast were clearly raised with the approach of imminent victory. They pounded against the walls and gates harder, stomped their feet, gnashed their teeth, and licked their lips. There were so many tremors, it felt as if the entire earth would be torn asunder. The humans knew they had been too weak to withstand such an assault. They knew their efforts to maintain control over trench shelter against such a horde of beasts had been a foolish endeavor. Everyone, return to the Alliance. Zhao Long gave the order to return, as he alone remained fighting. He hoped to buy the rest of his people time so they could escape. The surviving elites fell back but did not leave. They wished for as many others to evacuate before they themselves did, as well. Su Xiaoqiao felt terrible. He saw the horror and despair in his compatriots, but he knew nothing could be done to help save the day. And if they left, he knew it was extremely unlikely they'd ever return. Coins, someone shouted. When Su Xiaoqiao heard this, the extinguished fire in his heart was relit. He asked, Coins? Is Dollar here? Su Xiaoqiao did not see the enigmatic figure himself, but he did see a number of coins raining down from the sky. Chapter 1086 That really is Dollar. That really is Dollar. Su Xiaoqiao exclaimed in shock. He had no idea what had just happened, but the landscape of battle had immediately morphed. Coins scattered across all the raging beasts, peppering them. No one knew why the coins were there, though, or what they would do. But in the next second, silence filled the shelter as everyone stared across the battlefield with eyes wide and mouths agape. Boom. When those coins landed on the monsters, they all toppled and fell to the ground as if they had been crushed under an immense weight. It happened to every single raging beast, even the sacred blood class variant. They all fell down and squealed, under a phantom distress and inability to rise. What is this? What's happening? Zhao Long wasn't sure what to think right now, but the sudden turn of events had definitely left him surprised. The same could be said for all who witnessed what was occurring. They all looked at the toppled creatures in disbelief. The berserk sacred blood beast was the only that hadn't collapsed. It screamed to the heavens, defying the weight that sought to bring him down. But suddenly, a bright white light in the sky appeared. It was a humanoid figure with long white hair. Inside that warm glow, this person looked like an actual god. He was clad in armor, and as he drifted down towards the monster, a coin was wedged between two of his fingers. Then he fired it out at the monster. Everyone watched the coin plant itself on the beast's forehead. Immediately after this occurred, the giant crumpled and fell. At the same moment, the beast's body began to crack like an egg. As if it was suffering immense pressure, it began to break apart. From the web of cracks, blood began to ooze. Boom. The berserk sacred beast was entirely crushed by an invisible force. It was crushed down into a lumpy mound of bloody, sloppy jelly meat. For a single coin to utterly annihilate a creature in such a manner was insane, and the people of the shelter believed it to be the work of a god. You are dollar. Su Xiaoqiao exclaimed to the white shadow that had appeared and saved them. He could not see his face, but he had a feeling that it was him. 
Su Xiaoqiao, ah, it is nice to see that you are here, as well. Han Sen was happy to see a friend of his had reached the third god's sanctuary. Su Xiaoqiao was delighted at the response he received, and he said, You remember me? I've been here almost a year. It is so good to see you again. Everyone looked at Su Xiaoqiao differently following this. It was an incredible glory to have yourself personally recognized by someone like Dollar. I thank you for saving us. I am Zhao Long from Angel Jean. Zhao Long interrupted the two, speaking proudly. Dollar. Han Sen's response was short, but he then went on to say, The rest of these creatures will remain pinned to the ground for another twelve hours. I suggest you get rid of them soon. After that, the white light that surrounded Hansen amplified, and in a blinding flash, he disappeared again. The longer he used Super King Spirit Mode, the longer it would take for him to recover. Because of this, he did not wish to linger too long. He was only there to check out the shelter. He had not expected to arrive in the midst of a massive battle and be forced to save the humans there, who were on the verge of failure. With the need for haste, he transformed and decided to make use of the coin skill he had researched and developed during his time away from the sanctuaries. Han Sen was incredibly satisfied with the performance. It wasn't as effective when he cast multiple coins at once, but it could only improve from its already stellar performance. Han Sen knew he was his own toughest critic, but he put all his strength into the final coin and came away surprised. He knew it'd be powerful, but he never expected it to be that effective. Hansen wasn't too worn out after his return, since he didn't spend much time in Super King Spirit mode. He couldn't return to Trench Shelter right now, so Hansen turned around and returned to the Barren Lands. Dollar's appearance at Trench Shelter was a hot topic, and news of the escapade quickly became viral. His glorious return was a water cooler news item for people all around the Alliance. The news spread even quicker when it was learned a number of prestigious characters were saved by Dollar's appearance like Zhao Long from Angel Jean. For a single coin to crush a berserk sacred blood creature, everyone was ravenous to guess how powerful he might have become. A lot of people had believed Han Sen was the enigmatic Dollar. But now that he was a cripple, as it was believed, they did not think him to be Dollar anymore. It was not too uncommon for people to max out their Super Geno points now, but the first person to do this was Ji Qing. In the first God's Sanctuary, slaying super creatures wasn't all that difficult so it didn't come as much of a surprise to learn she was the first to do this. The Ji family, as proud as ever, made sure to announce this to the Alliance. They were more than happy to add another notch to their already prestigious belt of accomplishments. Everybody knew about super bodies, and Ji Qin's was called Sword Soul. It increased the owner's skills with a sword. After Ji Qin's achievement, everybody put a heightened focus on training their super body. With angel gene fluid and pet pills, many super bodies were created. Everyone's was different, too. The super body received depended on their bodies and genes. If they practiced with the fire element, they'd receive a fire super body, for example. Chapter 1087 Crazy Killing super creatures in the second god's sanctuary was a far more difficult task than killing super creatures in the first god's sanctuary. Very few humans were able to max out their super geno points there before proceeding to the third god's sanctuary. Hansen hoped more humans would come into possession of a super body. If humans wanted to conquer the third god's sanctuary and become more than free-range slaves, they'd need this strength. Hansen had been fortunate as Dong Shen Sutro was able to refine life geno essences. That was how he had been able to max out his super geno points. But because he wished to keep its existence a secret, he had been unable to announce the fact he had already maxed out his super geno points long before anyone else did. He wondered whether a super body was based more on genes or fitness. Hansen had practiced the Dongshan Sutra, the Bloodpool Sutra, and Jade Skin. They were his holy trinity, and the super body he had was a super king spirit body. What he didn't know was whether it was the skills in his possession or his fitness that had influenced this. Bauer was currently asleep on Han Sen's belly while he read the news. Ji Yin and was at the nearby table, working. Suddenly, Han Sen's communicator rang. I'll take this out there, Han Sen said. He placed Bauer on the sofa, and then he stepped out into the yard with his communicator. He answered the call and was greeted with Lin Feng's face. Long time, no see. Han Sen said hello. Lin Feng was the formal sort, so he got right to the point. In four days, the four families are having a meet and greet again. This time, 
the focus is on surpassers. I hope you will be able to find the time to join us there. What is the point of me going to a shindig like that? Hansen was not interested in meeting any more Shui, Wang, Ji, and Lin family members than he had to. In particular, he was not keen on those of the Shui family. And if he went there, and they picked a fight, he didn't want to engage. It will be held on the grounds owned by the Shui family. There is a problem. Lin Feng wished to explain more to Hansen before he dismissed the entire notion. What problem might that be? Hansen asked with meandering curiosity. Someone in the Shui family has gone mad, Lin Feng said. Aren't they all just a bunch of nut jobs? Hansen snidely remarked. Lin Feng ignored this and continued to explain, saying, If any old commoner goes mad, it's no big deal. But this is a demigod we're talking about here. His name is Shui Ching and he almost destroyed his family. Hansen was not expecting this, and his eyes immediately widened. He asked, really? Hansen thought there really had to be a problem with the Shui family. For one of them to go on a rampage and kill others of his own family, that really was bonkers. Lin Feng said, fortunately, when it occurred, the Lin, Ji, and Wang families were there to stop him. What happened? Hansen asked. Well, it seemed as if he himself knew he was going to go insane. Concerned, our elders went to talk to him. But by that point, he had already snapped. He was stopped, but only after killing a few people. Lin Feng paused for a moment, and then went on to say, Then, we discovered his journal. It made mention of there being a problem with Jade Scan, and it had the potential to drive them all crazy. It already does, a little. He said he had to figure it out before the entire family was driven insane. According to him, the higher the tier that is learned, the higher the potential for turning into a lunatic. Hansen was shocked to hear this, as he had learned Jade Skin, too. Did they find out what was wrong with Jade Skin? Hansen asked. Not yet. It is known that Jade Skin is a hypergeno art stemming from the Frost Sutra, something that belongs to the Shue family. We all want to bang our heads together and figure out what the problem is. It'll be a big meeting, with this bout of lunacy at its center, Lin Feng said. Lin Feng knew Han Sound had been researching hypergeno arts with Bai Yishan in recent times. There was a potential that Hansen had learned something useful. The Frost Sutra was a secret to most, so only important people were able to go to this meeting. In that case, I'll definitely come, Hansen said. Hansen did not use Jade Skin anymore, but he was still concerned. He feared it might have been some ticking time bomb, and if it was, he'd like to have it disarmed as soon as he could. The Frost Sutra was undoubtedly the best Qigong in the four families, but it was owned by the Shue family, and only they were able to learn it. If he was able to get a deeper understanding of its inner workings, he wasn't going to miss that, either. Hansen had learned many Qigongs over the years, and he had spent much time learning and studying hypergeno arts. There really was a fair chance he could elucidate or at least figure stuff out for those attending the meeting. The Frost Sutra was able to unlock ten gene locks but Jade Skin could only go as high as nine. After the conversation between Lin Feng and Hansen was over, Ji Yin Ren approached. She knew about the upcoming meet, but believed it had nothing to do with them. Regardless, Hansen asked Ji Yin and to ask her family to reserve a spot for him. They quickly approved a position for him there. The Shue family wasn't hiding anything anymore. Something grave was potentially plaguing every member of the family so they needed to figure out the issue before things became any worse. Their position in the family foursome had weakened considerably after their demigod lost his sense and started mercilessly killing people. So, they needed outside help. They could now see that they couldn't manage Jade Skin or the Frost Sutra alone, and they desperately wanted the help of the other families. Ji Yin An was uninterested in the meet, but she was going to be too busy to attend. Anyway. Hansen met up with her relatives alone and went to the meet with the Shue family. I always knew something was wrong with them. I'm surprised to see it really was Jade Skin. Still, I'm just happy I didn't end up like Shue Long Yin. Hansen thought to himself as he traveled in the spacecraft. It seems I might find out what the issue is once I get to see the actual Frost Sutra, Hansen thought. Chapter 1088 Simple Version of the Frost Sutra after meeting with the Ji family, they went to the planet where the Shue family resided. The planet was snow white, unsurprisingly. It was covered in ice, and the only season was winter. The temperature never left the negative end of the thermometer, and it was considered a hot day whenever it reached the heights or lows, if preferred, 
of minus 10 degrees. Ugh, weird. Why in the sanctuaries do they choose to live out here? Hansen looked around. Jihailan responded, saying, their hypergeno art requires frosty air. This place is perfect for them. Hansen was comfortable with the G family and was still in their good books. No one ever said anything mean or spiteful regarding the condition of his body. Eventually, the surpassers of the three other families arrived. They had all gathered there to research hypergeno arts, as they were all strong. The Shue family's position had weakened. They were the best, once upon a time, with the strongest elites amongst them. But with things crumbling, they had been somewhat humbled. Their arrogance had actually receded a little, but still, there was always a certain unpleasantness that surrounded them like a bad smell. People of the Shue family were never, and seemingly would never, be the sort that were easy to get along with. They all gathered inside a modern building, but unfortunately, there were no radiators. No one complained about it being too cold, though, as most surpassers had resistance to that sort of temperature. Hansen sat in the room he was provided, and soon after, a knock sounded on his door. It was Lin Fong. Come in. Hansen swiftly welcomed him inside. Lin Fong said, if you aren't too tired, let's go to the training room. Can we? Hansen asked. Everywhere has been opened up for us. We can go wherever we please. The training room has a simplified version of the Frost Sutra, too. We still need to wait until later, when everyone has arrived, to hear the complete version, though. Let's go then. Hansen grabbed his coat. Lin Fong had been to this place once before. Hansen hadn't, so he didn't know what to expect of the training room, and he wasn't sure if he should have been surprised to find out it was an ice cave. It was minus 100 degrees in that cave, and Hansen found it difficult to imagine how the newbies trained there. After following down a hallway that skirted the training room, they reached a room. And there, it was even colder. There were many platforms for training. In the middle stood a stone carving, and etched into the rock was a simplified version of the Frost Sutra. This was jade skin. A dozen people were there, looking at it. They were comprised of people from the Lin and Wang family. There were Shue family guards around, too, protecting the place. Hansen read it a few times and acknowledged it was the same one he had learned from Shue Longyin. If this has caused them issues, then I should expect the same, Hansen worriedly thought to himself. Hansen asked Lin Feng, might it be their geno fluid that brings about the problems? Hansen did not use geno fluid when he learned this. So, there was a difference. Lin Feng answered, good thinking, but a few professors have already researched the geno fluid used. Apparently, it isn't a harmful substance. Hansen frowned, not being able to think of any other reasons why it could cause an issue. If you don't know anything, then keep your mouth shut and don't talk crap. We wanted to bring in elites to sort this out for us, not some useless cripple, a Shue family member arrogantly commented. Everyone there knew Hansen was disabled, so when they heard him suggest it might have been the Geno fluid, one of them just had to say something. I can't fight, but I do research alongside by Ishan. I have researched Qi Gongs and Hyper Geno Arts intensively. It's my profession. You guys wanted the Frost Sutra to be researched. Did you not? Hansen calmly responded. Hansen knew the people of that family were all a bit loco and volatile, so he did not wish to spur the comments into a catalyst for an argument or fight. He allowed the Shue family member to speak what he wished to. The Shue family member did not reply, though. Have you found anything out yet? Lin Fong asked Han Sr. Hansen answered, from this thing? I don't see an issue. Perhaps I will learn what the issue is upon seeing the complete version. In that case, we'll be stuck in this eye hole for another two days. Everyone took the matter seriously. And if they couldn't sort out what the issue was, there'd no point in any of the families learning it. They wanted to sort it out almost as badly as the Schweff family. The skill was very beneficial, so they didn't want something like that to go to waste. Back in his room, Hansen asked, Can you provide me a sample of their geno fluid? That shouldn't be difficult. If they are to reveal the skill itself, I'm not sure this would be something they'd mind, either, Lin Feng said. Hansen returned to his room and contacted the Shue family. Not long after, they delivered what he had asked for. Hansen opened the door and saw an ice-cold woman standing outside. She looked so pretty, but also so severe. Chapter 1089 Why would it react? The woman looked at Hansen with eyes that were sharp like stabbing stilettos. Hansen was not a person who was easily intimidated, so despite her heart-chilling presence, he was able to smile and ask her, 
Are you here to deliver the Geno fluid? The woman did not answer Hans' senator. She only stood there silently. But just as Hans Sin was going to repeat his question, she spoke. What she said surprised him. You have learned jade skin, have you not? The woman asked. Hansen was taken aback by this, but he maintained his cool and feigned cluelessness. He told her, Me? How could I have learned jade skin? The woman replied to this, saying, Where you learned it does not matter to me, but if you can solve this problem that plagues our family, you will be handsomely rewarded. I haven't learned it, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to help. Hansen would never admit it. The woman then provided Hansen with a bottle and a few documents, telling him, this is Jade Skin's Geno Fluid and Formula. If you have any problems, feel free to give me a call. What's your name? Hansen asked. My name is Shwefian, she answered. Then she walked away. Shwefian believed Hansen had learned Jade Skin, which made him feel uneasy. He had no idea how she had managed to find this out. Before Hansen could shut the door and retreat to the studies he wished to compose, Ji Hyon appeared. He immediately blurted, Oh, have you been cheating on Yeran? You naughty devil you. Hitting on Shwefian, are you? You must have a thing for ice caves. Tell me how you were able to seduce that woman's icy heart, or the next thing I do. I'm calling Yanran. Hansen merely gave a wry smile, answering, I didn't even know her name, and neither did I know she was a lady of the Shwef family. She was here delivering the Geno fluid and formula. Hansen then showed Jihai on the items he had just received. D asterisk him in. The Schweff family's got their ladies running around like postmen? Well, if she's the one making the rounds, I'm going to go call for some too. Ji Hylon looked disturbingly excited. Uncle Hylon, is she a person of much renown? Hansen asked. He was still reeling from the fact she knew he had learned jade skin. What? You have no idea who she is? She's the prettiest person on this ice-ridden rock. Sometimes, I find myself questioning whether or not you're actually a man. Ji Hailan had a genuine suspicion Hansen was gay. Hansen loved beautiful women, but he was faithful. He had a firm control of what was in his pants, and he would not dare love other women while he was with Ji Yanran. Besides, Shwe Fian had just exposed his ownership of jade skin. Hansen's knowledge of her only covered a few shallow grounds. She was pretty and was twenty years of age. She was the daughter of the demigod who lost his marbles, and she was a talented fighter. Shwe Fian, however, was still in the first god sanctuary. She wasn't an evolver yet. Even so, this just added to Han Sen's perplexion. If she was that low in her sanctuary career, how was she able to tell Han Sen had learned jade skin? Back inside his room, Han Sen no longer felt safe. If the rest of the Shwe family came to know that he had learned jade skin, things might quickly go awry. Running off now would be suspicious, though. I'll just have to keep denying it. No matter how many accusations there are, Hansen told himself. Because he hadn't practiced jade skin for a long time, and the crazy demigod was locked up, he thought that none should have been able to tell he had learned it. Evidently, he was incorrect. Fortunately for him, though, the Shwe family was in bad shape and might not lash out. They didn't have as much influence or room for maneuverability with their strained relationships. If the Shwe family of today was the Shwe family of a few years ago, and Hansen would have been on the next flight off that planet. Hansen then remembered he owned the Black Beetle. If he had to, he could use that to escape. He put his hand in his pocket to touch the insect. As he stroked the beetle, it brought him comfort. With that thing, it'd be impossible for him to lose a fight in the Alliance. With his fears allayed, Hansen got to work researching. He had no tools, so he simply looked at the ingredient list. He was now well-educated in the crafts of Geno Fluid so he knew what he was looking at. This Geno fluid was primarily comprised of Ean Force and concentrated elemental ice ingredients. By all means, from what he could tell, consuming the Geno fluid would be good for you. He saw no reason why it would damage or drive individuals insane with rage. And a single consumption was all that was needed. There was nothing in it to make people addicted to repeated dosages. The next morning, Hansen decided to have breakfast with G. Hylon. The Shwe family members that were around the cafeteria seemed oblivious to Hans Sin's learning of jade skin, as no further mention was made of it. While Hansen looked around in suspicion, G. Hylon went on and on about how it wasn't Shwe Fian who delivered the items to him, and it was just some crotchety butler. After they finished their meals, they went to the ice cave. The jade skin carving was simple enough for Hansen to read, not that he had to. 
Was she messing with me? Was she only just guessing? Hansen thought to himself. But the way she had looked at him with those cold eyes made him feel otherwise. She didn't seem like the sort to joke around like that. Schweffian kicked out everyone who was in the monitoring room and turned her attention to Hans Sr. In her hands, there was a jade stone that looked like ice. Many words had been carved into the relic. Schweffian rubbed it gently, staring at Hans and through the camera feed. No way. He doesn't look as if he has practiced jade skin. Aside from his skin being supremely smooth, I don't see why anything would suggest he has learned it. But then, why would the frost jade have a reaction to him? Schweffian was confused. Chapter 1090, Frost Jade When the faction was originally split into four families, the Schweff family was given the Frost Sutra. The primary reason for this was how well it suited them. The Frost Sutra relied on Ian Power and the Ice Element. Members of the Schweff family had a body type that was comprised of both traits, which made them the best candidates to learn it. That being said, the Schweff family always knew there'd be a problem if they were to learn it. Before the sanctuaries were discovered, humans were weak. And for the Schweff family, that meant they could only learn a portion of the Frost Sutra. Rarely was someone's emotions affected by its learning back then. And furthermore, Ice Heart was designed to erase the negative emotions that arose from its learning. But through the sanctuaries, as it was for every other family, they became stronger. And as a result, the effectiveness of the Frost Sutra increased. But for this sutra, there wasn't a vertical ascension of power. Something changed with the Frost Sutra, and now, by the time the Schweff family themselves were able to notice, it was too late. Shui Ching became aware of this first, but his efforts were insufficient. He failed and went insane before he could discover the cause. It was currently thought that this was because he had reached the highest tier possible of jade skin. Shui Ching gave Shui Fi in the ice jade before he snapped. That stone possessed the original version of the Frost Sutra. The strangest thing about it was that it could react and determine other individuals in the environment that had also learned the Frost Sutra. This was displayed through a shift in temperature. It reacted by growing colder when in proximity to someone who had learned the Frost Sutra. Tear was not accounted for in this reaction, though. The drop in temperature was not related to whether it was close to someone with a high-level version of the Frost Sutra or a low-level version. The shifts in temperature just seemed random. When the ice jade was near Shui Ching, it was not as cold as it was near Shui Fian, for example. Shui Fian was the one who could make the jade the coldest it could be. The Shui family did not know what this suggested, and neither did they know the benefits one could receive by clutching the jade. When Lin Feng and Hansen visited the ice cave, Shui Fian was only 20 meters away from them. This provoked a reaction from the jade, which instigated her confusion regarding its behavior. The jade only started to react after Lin Feng and Hansen entered. Keen to find out if it was Hansen who had caused the reaction, she decided to deliver the items he had ordered to him herself. The results were quite shocking, in that the reaction was far stronger than she expected. She had never received such a reaction from anyone else in the Shui family. There would have been no reaction at all if someone had not practiced jade skin. This was how she figured Hansen had learned the Frost Sutra, despite him not giving any indication. Aside from his smooth skin, there was no frosted air surrounding his being. Those who had learned jade skin typically possessed eyes tinted by a bluish hue. Because of this, Shui Fian was rather confused. Hansen looked ordinary to her own eyes, but the jade was telling her otherwise. Hansen must have at least learned the first stage of jade skin, something which prompted the initial reaction. It remained to be seen how far he had developed, and that was why she came to watch the security feed. She wanted to study Hansen and learn as much about him as possible and see if she could discern whether or not he possessed any visible traits of jade skin. Maybe this jade is simply broken. Shuefian wondered if the ice jade had simply been mistaken and malfunctioned in some way. She exited the monitoring room none the wiser, but she still harbored a great deal of suspicion towards Han Sr. If Hansen practiced jade skin, and he had done so without any of the problems she and her family were suffering from, he could end up resolving the issue. He might have the potential to save the Shui family. To prevent any further tragedies, she wasn't going to let this go. She herself was determined to find a way in which this entire ordeal could be resolved. I have to fight him. If I fight him, maybe I can find out the truth, Shui Fian thought to herself. She was aware of Han Sin's condition, however. Like everyone else there, she believed he could no longer fight or make use of his energy flows. 
But even if this was true, that did not mean he had lost his abilities completely. So, through battle, she thought she could discover the truth. Shwefian had to find a way, and if she was to do this, she'd have to be careful. She couldn't boldly request a match and risk inciting the ire in spite of the other three families. Wanting to battle a crippled person was not in good taste, after all. She had to devise a clever way in which she could fight him. Hansen had no idea what manner of thoughts were running through Shwefian's mind at that point. His mind was currently concerned with only one thing, and that was Jade Skin. Long ago, when he first learned Jade Skin, he had noticed a problem with it. Back then, though, he had no idea whether or not it was a problem of his own or a problem of Shweikwan. He recalled the time he was robbed of all emotion, and his temper was spiteful towards the Silver Fox. To calm himself and restore his emotions, he had to use the Dongshin Sutra to regain control and flush the negative energy of Jade Skin out of his body. Now that he thought about it, though, he wasn't sure how it began. It had just occurred. Whatever it was, I'm sure the Dongshin Sutra helped sort it out for me. But it's not like I can teach that sutra to the entire Shwe family. Hansen was not charitable, especially when it came to the people that had repeatedly tried to kill him. After two days had passed, the main event began. The meeting started in the hall where all the families convened. There, the Shwef family presented the original version of the Frost Sutra and used a projector so everyone could see it. With that, all saw it clearly.